Go ahead and open up the exercise file for this section. We're going to refine this 10 shape a bit further before we finish with it. See the odd ridging here at the top? This is from when we created the outer edges, but we've since moved those edges of the cage inward. With the crease mode of the Edit Subdivision tool active, click these top center edges and vertices to remove the creasing and get our smooth look back. But now that we've moved those cage elements inward, we need to crease the new outer top edges to get our rectangular shape back. Go ahead and click all of the new uppermost exterior edges and corners of the cage with the crease mode. This restored our rectangular top, but the edging here along the top is a bit too sharp. This area should be thicker and flatter to represent the framing underneath. In a front view, with the edge split mode active, click just below the current top of our rectangular roof. This will create the bottom of our framing component. So, again, with the crease mode still active, click on the upper, thin rectangular faces of the cage, two per side. Now we have a sort of shrink-wrapped look at the moment, where the cloth of the tent is pulled very tightly around the tent frame, which looks a bit like elastic. This is fine if you're going for that look, but we want to square this off a bit more traditionally, as you would see with canvas or another more inflexible material. In a front view, enable the edge split mode, and click once along the bottom edge of the cage, once on each side, just inside the far left and far right cage edges. Our tent is shaping up nicely. Now to focus on the top. Do you see where the faceting increases right at the point? This is because there is so little cage geometry near the top that the facets on the model are stretched thin. To reduce this appearance, let's go to a top plan view again, then activate the transform mode. Select the inner vertices and bring them in 2 meters or negative 2 meters on both the left and right sides. Switch back to a front view, then marquee select the row of vertices immediately below the very top, the ones we just tucked inward. And then, with the transform mode still active, move them upwards one meter. Now, activate the selection tool so that the cage is hidden. See this odd blurry faceting toward the top of the object? This is the same issue the peak had, facets being stretched too thin. Activate the edge split mode of the edit subdivision tool, and then in a front view, Click along the angled edges right above the squared off framing, and you'll see that odd faceting vanish. The more cage geometry we apply to this object, the more directly we can control its appearance. Since we already have multiple cage edges surrounding our figure, we change less of the overall shape each time we add another edge now, as opposed to the beginning where two edges converted our shape from a circle to a rounded rectangle. Finally, to give our top ridge a little more definition, with the split edge mode active in front view, Click along one of the side edges just below the squared off top section. Then, with the transform mode active, select that new set of vertices on the left and move it 0.1 meters toward the center of the tent. Same on the right side, with negative 0.1 meters. Then change to a side view and do the same with that set of vertices on the front and rear as well to keep things even. For a final touch, every self-respecting tent needs a pennant. This is a very simple object to make with a subdivision. Return to top plan view and then move off to the side to give ourselves some room to work. Double click on the edit subdivision tool and select a triangle primitive. Enter a length of 1 meter and click OK, then place the triangle in the document. Then with the transform mode, select the entire subdivision and grab the blue rotate handle and rotate everything to the left 30 degrees. Then select the far right four vertices and move them further to the right by 0.5 meters. Then select just the rightmost vertex and move it another 0.5 meters to the right. 
Activate the edge split mode and create two new edges by clicking between the central and far right vertices along the top and bottom outer edges of the flag. Then add another edge between the center cluster of vertices and the left edge of the flag as well. Now enter a front view, then activate the transform mode of the edit subdivision. Marquee select the cluster of vertices one group in from the left and move them up 0.2 meters. Then switch to a top view and move that same selection up 0.1 meters. Then return to a front view, select the cluster of vertices one group in from the right and move them downwards 0.2 meters. Then back to a top view and move that same cluster down again 0.1 meters. Finally, in a left view, rotate the entire object 90 degrees so that it's standing up on its end. Zoom out so that you can see your pennant as well as the tent. Then with the selection tool, click and drag the pennant to the top peak of the tent. Enable object snapping in the object palette and snap it into place like so. That will do it for working with flat primitives. In the next section, we'll cover creating solid 3D geometry from closed solid primitives.